The organizations and individuals, representative of 160 million Americans, petitioned the United States Supreme Court on behalf of Reverend Moon and their own religious freedoms. But their voices were ignored. Marches, rallies, and protests followed. Petitions were sent to the president. All across America, a new movement was afoot for the morals, values, and freedoms of all religious people. The events of the following day, August 20th, signaled the solidarity of Americans and religious leaders against the persecution of Reverend Moon and against government interference in our lives. What follows are excerpts from that day's press conference and the evening banquet. Is this not the land created for freedom? Is this not the land that my God gave to me? This is the country we built with our father, place where a man and his God should be free. All of our lives we've been long Freedom to be all that we're meant to be. All of our lives we've been searching for Canaan, place where a man and his God can be free. Place where a man and his God can be come here on the issue of religious freedom. We are here fighting together for religious freedom so that we can fight each other on all the other issues later. Amen? Right. And uh, that's what America is all about. Now with that said, today has been selected as the day for this religious freedom uh, conference because this is the day that Reverend Sun Myung Moon is being released from prison. He is leaving the halfway house today. I have never met Reverend Moon. Most of the men here have not. I have never corresponded with him. I've never talked with him. I've never had any contact whatsoever. And theologically, we disagree. All of that is irrelevant to the fact that I happen to think that he was treated unfairly, that because of the unpopularity of his uh, religious uh, faith, uh, he received a one-year prison sentence when E.F. Hutton, with more than 100 worse violations, hasn't been tapped on the wrist yet. We say that that, uh, while the, that the Unification Church may be the unpopular one today, uh, next year it may be one of the rest of us standing here. Dr. Donald Sills is president of the Coalition for Religious Freedom, and he will share what is on his heart. Ladies and gentlemen, we come before you today simply because of the fact in the last nine years there has been an explosion as far as government encroachment into the affairs of the church. Most people don't realize this, but in 1976 there were about 45 cases of government litigation. Today there are over 8,000. Those figures are frightening within themselves and a number of things that are taking place. One of them is the case that we're involved with today, and that's the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. He has been released from prison, but well, let me share this with you. To be convicted of a crime, to be placed in prison, and then to serve your time is not a victory for anything. It's a miscarriage of justice. And on behalf of the Coalition for Religious Freedom, today we're calling on the President of the United States for a presidential pardon. And I have here the pardon, a petition as such, and I'd like to distribute it to you at your leisure so you can take it and do what you will with it. But what we're actually saying is that it's time that God's people have come awake, we are aroused, we're not just talking to one another, ladies and gentlemen. The move has begun to grow across the United States. The churches are alive. The sleeping giant is awake. And all we can say is that government has gone far enough, and we're here to tell them that they're not going any further. Thus far, and no more. Dr. Robert Grant is chairman of the Christian Voice Organization and resides here in Washington, or his organization does in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Jerry. I'm speaking really in two capacities. One as the chairman of the board of Christian Voice, the conservative Christian lobby, 
The second is the chairman of the corporate board of the Coalition for Religious Freedom. I think it's important on this day that the implications and lessons learned in the Moon case not escape us. The first thing I would observe and draw to your attention is that this was a case in which both liberals and conservatives banded together in the defense of an unpopular religious figure. Secondly, uh, approximately 40 major religious organizations and leaders uh, signed amici briefs addressing the Supreme Court issue in defense of Moon. Almost all, if not all of those signers to that, uh, those briefs had never met or had any contact with Reverend Moon. I have never met the man personally. Uh, the third thing that I think we must learn is that bureaucra bureaucracies such as the Justice Department have certain guidelines that can be successfully bent by hostile and overzealous bureaucrats who are bent on getting someone. And this is exactly what happened in the case of Moon. Someone was out to get him, and they were successful. And that ought to be a corrective and a lesson to all of us who represent religious groups in this country. If we are being smiled upon by the bureaucracy today, we may be frowned upon by it tomorrow, and they may also be able to get us. Within the Justice Department, three of their career attorneys had already decided that Moon's case was unworthy of being addressed, that there was no issue there, and yet someone decided to get him. Also, they, as, as uh, Dr. Falwell pointed out, have specific guidelines as to the dollar amount involved. If a tax liability is less than $2,500, they don't mess with it. In this case, three years' liability totaled $7,300, and yet they decided to go ahead and to get him. Another lesson is the, is the lesson that uh, it is possible to abridge the historic right for a defendant to choose either a bench or a jury trial. Moon was forced to have his case heard before a hostile jury, and that jury was forced to discuss important involved constitutional issues that they were not equipped or prepared to discuss and that travesty of justice resulted in this unpopular figure going to jail. Now, nothing can be done to replace the 18 months of incarceration, of persecution of this major religious figure. Nothing can be done to replace that or to replace the dollars that were spent in his defense. But I, su I suggest to you, and I speak on behalf of Christian Voice, on behalf of the coalition, I think on behalf of Senator Orrin Hatch, and a host of other organizations in suggesting that President Reagan ought to consider granting a full pardon to Reverend Moon. This is the least that can be done. And I would also point out that that may be an unpopular thing for him to do. It may have political consequences which are not perhaps the wisest from a political standpoint, but he ought to do it because it is the right thing to do. Thank you. <coughs> The last speaker that is on the schedule is Dr. Joseph Lowry, who you all know, president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Before he comes, we'd like for each person who is here as a participant in this press conference, though we could not bring everybody up here and stay within the schedule we promised you, we'd like for them, each one, to identify themselves and their ministry. And if they have a brief statement, feel free to do so. Begin with right here. Bill <coughs> Heinlein one of Reverend Moon's uh, attorneys. I have no ministry on <laughs> All right. Bishop? I am D. Ward Little, the senior bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal <coughs> Church. And I came to voice our sentiment in behalf of uh, Sun Yun Moon. And I joined with my colleagues in saying that we think that he was done in. And we are here now to celebrate his coming out. Could you do that at the podium, please, sir? Well, we're not going to give, uh, we, 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 let's go around. Go ahead. Fred Brown, Chairman of the National Black Republican Council, here to reaffirm our support for Reverend Moon to the extent that we feel that the travesty of justice has been violated here and his constitutional rights. If you're a firm believer in religious freedoms in this country. Yes, sir. Cleon Skousen. President of the National Center for Constitutional Studies here in Washington, D.C. The case was first brought to our attention by Senator Hatch 
And our researchers were shocked uh, with the way that this entire case was conducted, and we were among the first to prepare an amicus brief on his behalf addressed to the Supreme Court. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Bernard Lee, uh, Assistant Pastor of Trinity Baptist Church of uh, this city, and uh, Special Assistant to the Mayor, Mayor Barry on Religious Affairs. Thank you. E. Randall Osborne, Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and Dr. Bill's Flower. Wesley Clark, Pastor of West Coast Baptist Church in California, <laughs> Vice President of the California Committee for Religious Freedom. Dr. Donald Sturgeon, Senior Minister, Lenox Bethany Baptist Church, Inglewood, California, Executive Director, California <coughs> Committee for Religious Freedom. Yes, sir. Kenneth Miles, Pastor at Christian Fellowship Church in Tucson, Arizona, I'm the State Director for the Arizona Committee for Religious Freedom, and I also represent the <coughs> grassroots structure of the ministers that are beginning to come together and declare that we stand with these gentlemen here. Dr. Greg Dixon, I'm pastor of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple. I'm the co-chairman of the American Coalition of Unregistered Churches. And we have a statement here, and we didn't take time to read it, but if you'd like to have it, it's right here. Thank you very much. And Dr. Lowry will add some further comments, after which questions. <clears throat> the Moon case is particularly frightening, because not only is the issue of religious liberty involved, but perhaps the issue of racial discrimination. I am particularly frightened, and Brother Falwell, I'm glad you said most of us have not worried about government coming to get us. A few of us have been in jail uh, because the government did come to get us. Uh, fortunately, not on religious liberty, but not separate from religious liberty. For the black church has been the bulwark never failing in the struggle for freedom and liberation for black people in this country. The President of the United States, who steadfastly claims to uphold the separation of church and state, and who proclaims his support of religious freedom, has been strangely silent as the number of intrusions swell to an unprecedented level during his administration. And perhaps part of the failure of, part of our failure, to halt this escalating intrusion by the government it must be placed at our doorsteps. Too many of us have been willing to engage in line item veto of the struggle for freedom and liberty in this country. Too many of us have been unwise enough to think that we can uh, remain silent or even support the erosion and violation of some liberties while at the same time effectively protecting our own favorite liberties. Sir, without, without, uh, in the floor. Are you saying that a religious leader should be above the law in this respect? In no way whatsoever. And uh, there are most, I would say, all of us at this table uh, who have been involved from the beginning. I was on the Donahue show with Dr. Lowry once, and uh, just as this gentleman called Dr. Lowry a little bit inconsistent, I got a few of those calls myself. But uh, we were there because we are con absolutely, totally believe the man was innocent, period. Well, I'll say, wait a minute, let me, let me, let me just add, of course the preacher and the church are not above the law, but neither is the government above the law. Yes. Have you had an opportunity to talk to the president about Senator Hatch's letter to Edward Bennett Williams about what the Justice Department did to cook up this... Um, uh, uh, I was one of, I think, uh, 15 or 20, some at this table, who signed an official document to the president more than a year ago to prevent his going to jail. And uh, we did not hear from that at all. Did the president say anything to you at all? There's never been a word exchanged between the two of us about Reverend Lowry. Well, do you, and I'd like to ask uh, Reverend Lowry the same question as well. Do you intend to do something as a follow-up to your statement that there's a need for a pardon on this matter? I think that uh, the president should pardon uh, Reverend Lowry. I think that he was uh, a victim of a of a railroading job, and I think we all are losers in the religious community because of it. I'll tell you all, raise your hands if you agree with the call for a pardon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have not. Some may have. Yes, I visited Reverend Moon in prison in uh, Danbury, uh, Connecticut. 
I visited him in prison. Uh, but since he's been released? No, not since, no before. The only time I've ever met him was when I uh, visited him and had prayer with him in prison. And by intent, I have not contacted him because I knew that this press conference one day would be held. And I wanted to be able to look, look everybody in the eye and say I'm on nobody's payroll and I haven't talked to anybody and exchanged any, any expressions of support or whatever. I'm here because I believe in what I'm doing here. And uh, I stand with all of these men unashamedly. And you'll see us on other platforms standing against each other, hopefully in love. Reverend Moon was grandly welcomed on his first full day of freedom by 1,700 clergymen representing every state at the Omnishoram Hotel in Washington, D.C. Tonight, of course, our, one of our primary reasons for gathering is to extend a very warm welcome to our guest of honor. And if you would please, at this time, for that individual who has just recently been released from prison, would you welcome with me, please, the Reverend Sun Myung Moon and Mrs. Moon, please. gathered here tonight to make a statement. We've gathered here tonight to make a statement to America and to the world that the sleeping giant of God's people is awake and alert and that we have found out that our religious liberties are being slowly chipped away and we've decided to put a stop to it. And so tonight we're gathering together in a show of force to say to the nation, God's people are alive and well, and we intend to be heard. <laughs> this meeting is a meeting of representatives of virtually every religion and denomination and theological persuasion, difference of opinion, whatever terminology that you'd like to put together with it. But we are people who have a basic commitment unto Almighty God Consequently, we have a commitment one to another to do everything within our power to continue to cry for the injustice that has been transpired against this man and to do everything within our power to guarantee that it does not happen again to anyone else in America. There ought never to be another preacher to go to jail. This afternoon, at the National Press Club, Dr. Jerry Falwell from Lynchburg, Virginia, president of Moral Majority, convened a press conference with a number of dignitaries from across the United States. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that there were statements made today, yes, on your behalf of religious freedom, but also going on record in a unanimous vote, as far as I could tell with the, with the large number that was there, and I understand there was about 25 of the ministers that had gathered together with a unanimous vote calling for a presidential pardon for Reverend Moon. And that's exciting to me. On behalf of the entire gathering, presentations were made to Reverend and Mrs. Moon. America's in a great deal of trouble today, and some of us elected officials up in the Northwest sense that we've been looking for answers. God has touched our hearts and inspired us to get back under the constitutional principles that uh, this nation was founded on. And we discovered an organization called CALSA. Many of us have stepped forward and attended those conferences, and we thank God for them. We take a little heat from the press once in a while. But if we stand for anything in this nation, we've got to stand for individual rights and the freedom of our religion to choose that religion and those beliefs that, that we choose for ourselves. And that's why we're here tonight. We want to honor the man who has inspired the Causa movement because it means so much to us. 
We have for Reverend and Mrs. Moon uh, a little card. We, we designed it this size so he could carry it around in his billfold. And it, it's handmade and uh, lined with, uh, with lamb and little uh, strips of wood. And there's an inscription inside, a little tribute I want to read for you. Reverend Moon, I'm going to uh, just let you hold this uh, as I read for the folks uh, what is written there. A tribute. We express our sincere gratitude for the efforts and ideals of CAUSA and its founder, the Reverend Sung Myung Moon. <laughs> <laughs> he, He's, he's had longer to practice that than I have. <laughs> we regret that he has been misunderstood and has faced injustice in the nation that God conceived in liberty. We may, may we not forget his sacrifice and devotion for our nation during the time of his unjust imprisonment. May God guide the efforts of Causa at this time, a crucial moment in history, and may America respond to the challenges we face together. May God grant you, Reverend Moon, the strength and courage to continue your good work. And now if uh, Representative Bayer would bring our little token, we'd like to present that to you. Congressman Walter E. Fontroy, Congressional Delegate from the District of Columbia, sent a special message to the God and Freedom Banquet. To the National Committee for God and Freedom, I would like to welcome all of you to our nation's capital for the God and Freedom Banquet. You have traveled from 50 states and numerous countries in support of God and freedom. Religious liberty is our most precious right and to see any erosion of our liberties, even for the least popular, is very painful. We must stand together as pastors to generate a new spirit of tolerance and compassion throughout the land. You are to be congratulated for your attendance at this banquet. Those who have suffered and endured religious intolerance are of special concern to us all. Again. I pray for God's blessing upon the God and Freedom Banquet, which is convened to reaffirm our religious freedom and to welcome Reverend Moon on the day of his release from prison. In Christ, Congressman Walter Fontroy. State Representative Frances Merrill from Utah reads a special message to Reverend Moon from her brother, U.S. Senator Orrin Hatch. I have the honor tonight to read a telegram that my brother sent to Reverend Moon. Welcome back, Reverend Moon, from an unjust time in prison. It was a miscarriage of justice, and in my opinion, an embarrassment to the United States. You are an example to others advocating freedom of religion, and we look forward to your continued fight for religious alternatives to communism. Sincerely, Senator Orrin Hatch. Reverend Moon is presented a ceremonial drum from Chief Robert Gopher, director of the International Pow Wow Society. The drum is traditionally presented to the one most dedicated to the Creator. He is the one who loves the Creator and the people of all races. Would you please welcome Chief Robert Gopher. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an American Indian drum 
played by a full-blood Korean. <laughs> Reverend Don Olson, president of Shared Action and pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church in Florida. Reverend Moon, I'd like to make this presentation, it's my honor on this historic moment, to present to you a God and Freedom Award. And I'd like to read the inscription here. It says, we are sorry that you have suffered the injustice and the humiliation of Danbury, but we are grateful that you have shown us the way of victory in faith. We appreciate your profound vision, which you have shared with us, and we will support you in your work wherever you may go. Presented on July 20th, 1984, Victory of Danbury. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Grant and I met in California. He comes tonight as the chairman of the board of the Coalition for Religious Freedom. He comes as one of the founders and chairman of Christian Voice Incorporated, which is the oldest and the largest religious political lobby organization in the nation. And he comes to you tonight as a man that Walter Cronkite said was very, very instrumental. Now, Dr. Lowry, you may throw something at him at this. But Dr. Cronkite said, or Mr. Cronkite said that he was one of them that was instrumental in getting Ronald Reagan elected to the presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome with me Dr. Robert Grant of Christian Voice. Washington and Jefferson would both agree today that the tension that was produced has now been lost and as a result we are facing a crisis in religious freedom. How then would these men who differed on that issue view the case of the Reverend Sun Young Moon if they lived today? They would, I suspect, applaud the some 40 major religious organizations who joined as a Miki friends of the court in support of Reverend Moon. They would have scorned the bureaucrats who bent all the rules to get this man. They would lament the establishment of precedents that have overturned the basic right of an accused to choose either a jury or a bench trial. They would denounce the presumptions of civil judges and courts to dictate to churches how they would handle their money and govern their internal affairs. They would bemoan the failure of a Supreme Court to stand as the final arbiter of justice and defend the one who is being unfairly treated. And they would join together, I suspect, to pray devotedly for the soon demise of those politicians, that ju those judges, those bureaucrats who abuse the power of their office by striking at the very heart of our God-given religious fight. I'm encouraged tonight. God is still on the throne. He is sovereign. This is a battle that we can win, my friends. And with God's grace, we're going to do so. God bless you. Dr. Joseph Lau, president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. I just want to say to the community of faith, it's time for us to go in and see the king. Esther didn't go in on behalf of herself. She wasn't just concerned about her rights and her liberties but she was concerned about the rights and liberties of all the people. But if some young moon's liberty is not secure, neither is Bob Grant's liberty, nor Bob Seal, nor Joseph Lowry, nor anybody. And that's why we've come here today to say that we shall come together in spite of our many diversities, and God knows we have some real diversity. If we are serious about fighting for religious liberty and freedom, we must understand, one, that there's no way to fragment or categorize your opposition against persecution and the violation of our liberties. If you are for religious freedom for anybody, you have to be for religious freedom for everybody. Dr. Cleon Skousen, founder and director of the National Center for Constitutional Studies, noted authority on the U.S. Constitution. Reverend Moon, Mrs. Moon. Dr. Park, and all you distinguished guests and my wonderful friends out there. Just imagine this, nearly 2,000 are gathered. We have a big overflow into another room, and here we all are rejoicing in this great event tonight. Reverend Moon, I bring you the greetings of my wife, 
and my eight children and my 42 grandchildren. <laughs> there are three days in August that I shall always remember. August the 13th, my wedding day. August the 29th, my wife's birthday. And August the 20th, when we welcomed Reverend Un back to freedom. When Reverend Moon came to the United States in 1971, couldn't speak a word of English. Sort of a fantastic situation, really. But he had a message for America from the Bible. And it's the same in Korean as it is in English. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and heal the land Now, how do you do this? Now, you come to America. You've announced that you're going to save America. Isn't that exciting? Now, the thing that has fascinated me is the manner in which he contrived to do that, the plan. How would you have done it? Well, he started out by saying that you've got to have at least one newspaper, major newspaper, that tells the truth. So he invested 150 to 200 million dollars in the Washington Times, which has now become a national newspaper, and my son who works in the White House tells me it's the most widely read paper in the Royal Palace. <clears throat> <clears throat> Secondly, Reverend Moon said, we ought to get all of those who are the leaders of the congregations of the churches of God assembled together, united in a program that will make them feel comfortable with each other and fight evil unitedly. Now, that, that's, a, that's a great achievement uh, in and of itself if you can do it. He didn't ask us to... Uh, change our theology he just said let's eat together and let's talk together and let's pray together and learn together and after that we'll work together against evil the fourth thing that Reverend Moon wanted us to do is to get back to the founding father's original success formula he knew we were off the track didn't know exactly what we'd done, but he wanted, whatever made us a free and a great people in the first place, he wanted us to get back to it. That was a job for Americans. And so tonight, as we face this great battle for freedom, founders established it, we've got to revive it and popularize it. And so we say to Reverend Moon, welcome back to the front line trenches in this great battle. Welcome home. Dr. Milton Reed, pastor of the Gideon Missionary Baptist Fellowship in Norfolk, Virginia. Certainly I had heard. All parts of the country, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly grateful for and humbled by your welcoming me back from prison in such a deep way. Representing all parts of the United States and so many denominations, 
I would also like to extend my sincere appreciation to those of who, those of you who have supported me during my court battles. In the filing of the amicus briefs to spring court, in the meeting, meetings and rallies for religious freedom, in prayer meetings in the common suffering fellowship and in the Causa Ministerial Alliance. Also, I thank you for your prayers and for many letters I have received from you while I was at Danbury, which I'll never forget. I have suffered imprisonment six times in my lifetime, as in the past, this time in prison provided me a moving experience with God. I was not there because of my per, uh, personal actions or mistakes, yet I did not bruise with resentment or hatred for those who persecuted me nor did I spend my time in prison pleading my innocence. Rather, I dedicate the time to prayer and med med meditation for understanding what America must do to fulfill God's will for the world. I would like to share with you some of my realization about this will of God. God's plan of creation was to create men and women as true love trees and made the earth a plentiful garden. The fall brought instead that the dominion of Satan over the human ancestral lineage, creating the wilderness of wild olive trees. God wants to cut the uh, wild olive trees and engraft them with the true, true olive tree, which is Christ. But God cannot cut and engraft those wild olive trees, which are possessed by Satan without some foundation being made. The very reason God established religion was to create his own garden in which he could cut, could cut the wild olive trees and engraft them with the true olive tree. On the fundaments, uh, foundation of religion, God will send the Messiah to craft humankind to him through the Messiah, the true tree. This is the essence of messianic ideal. Jesus, who came as the tree, olive tree, is the true parent himself. Since he came as true parents to give us rebirth, he told us to sever all our old relationships and attachments, people coming to God. Our religion, our denominations must exist for the will of Almighty God not just for the uh, propagation of narrow views. God cannot, cannot res reside within narrow views. God is not a uh, sec sectarian. God sees for beyond denominationalism. He is not confined within exclusivist uh, dogmas. He is rather the uh, parent to us all. And his unbounding love distinguishes no race or color of skin. He does not recognize the walls of na nationalism or cultural tradition. He is trying to his very hardest today to embrace all of humanity. Thank you. My dear clergy, do you think it 
is more chance that in America by having of re religious freedom. A national nationwide movement for religious freedom flourished up as a result of Reverend Moon's uh, imprisonment. In truth, this is not an accident, but a dispensation working behind the scenes. And would you consider it a coincidence that America as a nation which carries the banner for the free world and which has, has come to scope as a real threat of communism is now becoming aware of seriousness of uh, present danger uh, through the Causa Ministerial Alliance. The CMA is a truly interdenominational movement without walls which has spread like wildfire across the, this nation. Can we call this a mere accident? America is a nation founded on the spirit and the love of God, especially after World War II. God raised up America as a leader of nations for the salvation and freedom loving unity of the world internally, he was uh, repairing, uh, pre preparing this nation for the second coming of the Messiah. And to be contrary, that chaos for the world. Unfortunately, unfortunately this country continued to the ignore the uh, monumental will of God. America is withdrawing more and more from its global responsibilities, preferring to enjoy false comfort as if this nation were the world in itself. This attitude, of course, merely multiplies Americans' problem, both within the outside its uh, borders, serious racial problems, deterioration of social, ethical, and moral values, declining of religious life and Christian faith, and the rise of materialism and communism will not disappear just by ignoring them. God called me to, to come to America because of these problems. Christianity must repent with great anguish and must unite. We close must re-examine ourselves and also repent. <laughs> we are relieving the time when Jesus came to us and called the world to repentance. That call is being Repeat now. We must fulfill the world mission which God has bestowed, bestowed upon us. Without question, America must change. A new religious reformation must take place. Christianity must transcend denominationalism and, uh, and ascend to a higher dimension. We must realize that consider serious, seriously the mission of Christianity to lead the supra-denominational cultural revolution and on a worldwide scale. To commemorate that reunion, reunion tonight, we must determine to pursue the original path of Christianity. We must march forward on that way that we might receive our coming Messiah and help fulfill the will of God. May God abundant blessing be with you, with your family, and with all, your, all, and with all churches of America. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, as Rabbi Leifer comes and gives us the benediction for the evening, one thing that I think you need to be aware of, that this man stands before us tonight as a survivor of a concentration camp in Germany. He lost five brothers there. Prayer takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Would you bow together with us, please, in closing prayer? Rabbi. ね。じゃあ、愛するからといってね。で、この神、Well, to love, okay, there was such an incident that uh, uh, one brother uh, came up to me and then confessed, confessed his trouble. Well, why? Because he said, you know, Mr. Kame, you told me love your enemy. So uh, I had one sister whom I hated most. She's, oh, she was my enemy. I couldn't love her at all. She, I hated her. But because I hate her and then uh, she was my enemy, so I, I have to follow instruction, love my enemy. So she was my enemy and I took her to restaurant. I, I fed her and good dinner and then uh, still I felt that I didn't love her enough. So I took her to motel. And then uh, I, I felt I should love her more. So I slept with her. I loved her. And then I, I had a, a physical rela sexual relationship. Then I have the chapter two problem. I get accused now. But I'm sorry, but the, you told me love, love the enemy, so I tried. I, I Very, not the big, <laughs> not the big <laughs> <laughs> Okay,